Hello. Hello. And welcome to another episode of The Super Frozen Brother. Yeah. Um the I'm big having a frozen camera brother. problem over here that is like so vexing. Um, but in any case, y'all can hear me. So uh hello and welcome to another episode of The Super Data Brothers Super Show. That's right. I am Ryan. And I am Eric. And we are two real life brothers who work in the data and analytics industry. Hello, folks. Oh, oh. Oh, hello. I like the, I like the view. It's oh, yeah, creative. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, this is. Uh... So we have a super cool uh, episode today that we are very excited to bring you. Um, Eric, what do we got on tap for the people? Boy, do we have one. We have one for you today. We are doing a live unboxing of data storytelling cards. So we're going to be talking about data storytelling. What is it? We're going to be unboxing the data storytelling cards. We'll be talking with Nicholas Kelly the creator of the data storytelling card. So it should be a pretty good show. Absolutely. And as a reminder, folks, this is a live show. It is more fun for us and it mm -hmm. is more fun for you if you get your live reactions, questions, and comments into the chat, right? Let's pretend this is more like Twitch and less like LinkedIn, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I have first order of business, as always, if you give us a, uh, let us know where you're watching from, we will give you a shout out in the chat, Tom. So go ahead and... Uh, and let us know where you're watching from. And let's just bring Nicholas on and get this unboxing started. All right. N Nicholas, how's it going? It's great, gents. Pleasure to be here on the internet. Yeah. 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 Um, you guys are getting a great view of my uh, my camera, or uh, my mic here, rather. Um, uh, you know, it's um, uh, technical difficulty sometimes happens with these things, but the show must go on. Um, so... We're super excited to do this unboxing today, uh, Nicholas. Um, why don't you kind of, to set the stage, give us a little bit about your background and what brought you to the point where, you're, where you said to yourself, it's time to make some like physical things for data people to use in their jobs. Oh, that's, yeah. Cool question. Um, well, I started when I had less gray hair, maybe around 10 or 15 years ago. And I used to work in, Deloitte Analytics in my youth. And one of my jobs was to run workshops. So I had to like basically bring people into a physical space and work with whiteboards and sticky notes and all these things. And uh, much to my chagrin, because I love technology and I loved getting people using high tech stuff, but most people were engaged when I was using the sticky notes. So it started sort of evolving from there where I was like starting to use physical things, right? I started to make these templates to make it faster, you know, instead of me every time coming into a workshop and like sketching up on a whiteboard, oh, this is what your chart's going to look like. And, you know, here's your dashboard layout and all these things. Mm -hmm. I just started creating templates. And then from there, I was like, well, you know, I'm seeing all this stuff on Kickstarter and I kind of like into board games. So, yeah. you know, I used to like back some board games and it's like, well, you know, why, why don't I just make, make a template out of this, right? Like, um, the, into a board game, our board game approach. And that's really where it started. So we did our first Kickstarter back in 2018 um, for the dashboard wireframe kit. And that's sort of where it sort of started, where just having physical products for people to talk about very technical topics and kind of like reduce the distance or the friction that people have in talking about technical topics, especially like when you have, you know, very technical, let's say, data scientist talking to, um, or at least attempting to talk to a business person and i'm sure you can both attest to like oh yeah 
you know, I've I've thrown a, a data scientist into a couple of interviews back in 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 the past and hoped they would do well interviewing a, a business stakeholder. And you know, they they didn't do that well. I mean, it was like, you know, how do we get people to have a good conversation with someone um, when they're just not they don't have the people skills? And yeah. so the idea was to give them a, a physical tool to kind of like, hey, look at the shiny thing over here. You know, like don't look at me. I don't look at my lack of interpersonal skills. Look at this. <laughs> and, and, and so that was the idea, right? That's really <laughs> sort of where it started. And then um, with the data storytelling cards, it's just, um, I always struggled with storytelling, right? So it was like, how do you tell a story and how do you tell a story consistently? And I'll say I, I still struggle. I mean, it's still a hard thing for me to do, but the attempt with the storytelling cards was to make that a bit easier for people and to give them again like a set of tools and a framework to be able to start approaching data storytelling and so that's really where it came from and uh it seems like um that's just such an interesting point uh that it because data people as you say you know sometimes the interpersonal skills are what they struggle with not the technical skills and to give them an external focus for these conversations where it's not Mm -hmm. You know, it's let, let's walk through this tangible thing in the real world rather than just put the, all yeah. the pressure on me to present this. In f- yeah. In fact, Ryan, do you remember that uh, back when we were both working at the same company, um, I had to put together a training and then you had to deliver it. And what we were doing, we're having people build dashboards with little like little cutouts or yeah. whatever. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. It's like, man, if 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 uh, if. Uh, if like data storytelling cards existed or the, the wireframe that you were talking about, I was like, man, I kind of just bought that instead of like having to like try to fi- figure it out myself, you know? So I, th- I think yeah. it's interesting that like you create this product because like I've put in my personal like work, I have like done similar things like, okay, I need to, I need to create something here. So it's interesting that like now like a product exists for it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like you see the need for it. Right. And I, I, think, I yeah. think like, you know, you identified, how to solve for it, or at least one of the ways to solve for it, you know, and and Mm -hmm. just giving people like a set of tools um, to help them with whatever it is, you know, like, because like in data, we have, right, like to build dashboards, we've got, you know, Power BI, Tableau, Click, whatever it is, right, there's tools there to do it. Um, But there's not a lot of tools for data people to work with humans, right? Like, like, and it's hard. And and that's like, I've nearly gotten to the point now where it's like, working with data is somewhat easy compared to having data people work with other people that are non-technical like that's really hard and so the idea here was like let's give them some tools like there are lots of technical tools out there let's give them tools to work with the non-technical folks yeah absolutely i it just fits in so nicely that there's been this big um this big shift in the conversation too that you see happening about away from pure technical skills and mm-hmm. the, the the career the the key to career advancement as a data person is I think starting to incorporate soft skills. Can you communicate? Yeah. Can you tell a story? Can you work with a stakeholder who, who doesn't know what they want? Right. They like, mm-hmm. like it, it's not about gathering the right requirements. It's about working with them as people and helping them discover what it is that they need. Um, and so yeah, I'm, I'm me, go ahead. Yeah, Eric. I was going to say, right. In, in fact, uh, what's the, what's the number one data book for 2024? Yeah. Uh, how to win friends and influence people. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> it was the number one data book for 2023 too. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. I, if that's funny. I keep, I keep, uh, I keep quoting that book. I it, like in, you know, it, and it's, it's just so important for data people, just like yeah. that, the ability to, to talk to humans and, you know, like just, it'll just be my look though, that like AI is going to take over in the next, you know, few months and then uh-huh. Everyone will have to work with robots and <laughs> not hard anymore. How to, how, 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 to, how, how to win friends and influence, uh, yeah, robots. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. That's right. to win friends and influence chatbots. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, I'm, I'm so excited for this. Um, why, don't we, uh, why don't we actually, so I've got the, uh, the cards here. So I'm just going to flip this camera around. Yeah. And, and, um, while, while you're doing that, Ryan, I'll uh, give some, sh- some shout outs. We got, uh, we got Lynn, Lynn watching. Hey, Lynn, on YouTube. So he'll be seeing this, the unboxing eight seconds earlier. That's very true. Yep. Got, got Bronson from uh, Texas. Welcome. Hey, Bronson. Flora, Flora from Ottawa. Yeah. Bronson's here to support Nick. So <laughs> we love Bronson. 
All right. Yeah. And so, so Bronson, we have a, uh, we do the show every Thursday, usually at 12, 12 Eastern today. It's a little bit earlier. So if you like what you see, feel free to tune in next week. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So here we have them folks, the data storytelling cards. My, my favorite thing about this, uh, having never, not, you know, not opened it, I'm, I'm going in totally blind, right? Eric and I haven't opened this. We, you know, mm -hmm. we, um, uh, Nick's here to walk us through the content uh, of this box. The fact that there's an actual thing for me to hold as a data person is so awesome. <laughs> so um, I'll start by saying, like, what a cool concept, and and, and yeah. thank you for making these. Like, it's um, it's really a, a pleasure to have an actual tangible uh, thing for the job, right? Yeah, it's not just. Um, happening on a screen or in someone's head or in a chart or diagram. Uh, very cool. Okay, so um, before I unbox these, the data storytelling cards, give us an overview what these are and how this idea came to you. Yeah, I, mean, I think some of the, the biggest challenges that I experienced with data storytelling was just having a framework. You know, like, like instead of kind of just looking at a, a bunch of data, and figuring out, okay, well, you know, let me extract a story out of this. It was, what's a step-by-step -step process I can follow? You know, tell me the five things I need to do, or you know, whatever it is. How can I set this up? Uh, like, I think we're probably all pretty familiar on this show, like with you know requirements gathering processes and and various things for building dashboards. But we don't really have that for storytelling. At least, if you didn't have it in physical form, uh, I'll say there's plenty of good frameworks out there. And um, shout out to Brent Dykes, who's like a awesome at doing data storytelling. I'm yeah. nowhere near his level, but um, having a framework for us to use was going to help, I think, the rest of us. And so the main idea here is on the box, Ryan, you're going to see there's like uh, five categories. So if you flip it around to the front there. Um, so this is the framework, right, that, that I thought would work for this for like most people. If they follow these five steps, figure out who your audience is, what's the context, both like people context, data context, What's the tale? Now I had to go with tale instead of story because I needed it to spell acted. <laughs> so it's like, okay, we got tale. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, I, I guess I guess acid wouldn't quite work as good. <laughs> no, no. And then E for envision, which is like the data visualization portion of it. And then finally, how are you going to deliver your story? Is it going to be in a, a presentation? Is it going to be in person over a video call on a dashboard report? So that's the framework, right? So what you're going to see in here is a set of cards. So there's over 200 cards in this that are split across those five categories. So basically, you're going to end up picking cards for your specific situation. Like every time you need to do a data story, you would pick cards from each of these five categories, right? And you generally follow it in this flow, audience first, right? And then work your way through then to the context. So it's kind of also follows the same hierarchy of what you see there. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And one thing I, I would also uh, show people here, this, um, the, the, like this, so as a playwriting major, um, mm -hmm. and this chart you have here is, is exactly what you learn when you're studying writing or literature about how all the best stories are told, right? There's the context, there's, you know, the setting of the story, and then you have the rising action of the story, the climax of the story, which is um, you know, you think about a movie, it's like when you defeat the villain and then um, and then falling down from that, you wrap everything up and, you know, set up the sequel. Right. Um, and so uh, just seeing this chart on here is so cool. And it takes me way back to uh, to my my years in undergrad at university uh, studying storytelling. I, I, but the thing the thing with like, I totally agree, you know, and I wanted to put that on the box and like you know, design the cover so that. You know, people kind of get a sense of what's in there. Um, and even even now, like for me, Ryan, like I st I will still struggle with trying to tell that kind of story. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it, I will say it's just hard, you know, yeah. and it's, we're not always going to get the exact story we want to get out of our data. Um, so I kind of like had two choices to go, you know, which directions to go with these cards. Do we try and make it more generally applicable to like, okay, let's go and help you set yourself up for success versus going down specific methodologies and techniques for storytelling. Um, and we've kind of tried to do a blend of both, right? So we're trying to satisfy 
non-technical people working with data data people. So it'd be, this would be like a, you know, a, let's say someone from HR, right? Maybe who doesn't traditionally use data needs to work with their IT team. They can use these to help frame their story and structure their story without the need for really knowing what's in the underlying data, right? So they'll need to talk to their IT partners to figure out what that, 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 what that is. But also then it gives the technical person a structure to work with the non-technical people, the audience, right? The to you know they know all the data stuff, but they don't know how to work with people. So it's really trying to blend those two areas. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, I mean, it, it was really fun trying to put this together. It took forever. This was harder than writing the book, actually. Um, and you'll see why. For one reason, once you open it, every card has two sides, and <laughs> the rear side of every card has a reference to other cards that it's related to. So basically uh, I had to build a graph that related all these concepts to the other concepts and um, to make recommendations into what other cards you should be looking at. So for example, if you pick up the you know presentation card, right? To deliver my, uh, pr my story in a presentation, it's gonna recommend cards within the audience category. Maybe you're dealing with executives because usually when you give a presentation, it tends to be managerial or more senior people. And so, okay, you might want to look at the executive card, right? And, and so they're all they're all related as well. So you're going to see that once you open. Awesome, awesome. Well, why don't we uh, let's crack these things open and, and start looking at it, um, folks? If you're interested in getting a set of these, by the way, uh, we have a, um, a, a a link here for you to check them out on Amazon. Of course, you know this is an Amazon affiliate code, and if you do purchase a set of cards mm -hmm. through this code you know eric we, and i get two bucks or something like that oh two dollars man <laughs> yeah I, I think it's a few million bucks gents yeah <laughs> yeah so just night nice. all right <laughs> all right get opening yeah let's correct all, right. all right we've got a few more shout outs while we're here richard okay. ashton thanks for tuning in again martin otto from germany charles from atlanta thanks for tuning in all the way from germany eh wow oh yeah it's yeah, we have a uh, evening time there. We have a decent uh, kind of UK Germany uh, base. Yeah, um, a couple couple regulars who who tune in pretty much every week from from the UK or Germany. Awesome. All right, so I've got the uh, I've got the wrapping off. This is a substantial product, by the way. Like this is, um, I, I I I can tell that you, um, you know, like it just it feels good to hold. It's there's it's got. Uh, it's got some uh, weight to it. This is this is super cool. All right, here we go. Ready? Whoa! So the cards come in in kind of three packs. Now, is there meaning to the way these three packs have been divided? There's not really a meaning. So this kind of comes down to the manufacturing process, and it's there's so many cards in here. So yeah. normally in a box, right, you'd, you'd have like, you know, 54 cards, right? And they, mm -hmm. they have to seal them and, you know, to keep them away from air and moisture and all of those sorts of things. Yeah. So really it's it's somewhat arbitrary um, how these are broken up. But the first card is important. The, okay. the first one you see with the QR code. So that, you know, it is right by here. design. They are in order, just not in order. The the grouping doesn't make a ton of sense. with the Sure. Package, so we should start here. You can, yeah, you can, but I, you know, I'm going to give you the live version of it. <laughs> so basically, you would, you would scan that, and it, it brings you to the training, right? So it brings you to what I'll be describing as you go through and open the cards. But basically, that's the first thing you would do. Gotcha. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, crack this open. Yeah, like the the fun thing about with these is, you know, like doing um, like any kind of board game process or any kind of card manufacturing is. It's mm -hmm. a it's a fairly major learning curve. This is oh, our yeah. this is our fourth physical product, and so we kind of poured all our learnings into this, and you know like card quality, card size, card thickness, box quality, design, all of these factors that mm -hmm. go into it. You know, and we self publish. We don't work with a publisher when we do these products. So um, you know, there's all of that effort that goes into it as well. So what you're looking at there now, Ryan, is the it's the back side of one of the cards. Okay. And you can see how like the colors of those cards, like the colors on the backs are associated with those categories we saw on the front of the box. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so what I'm seeing here is like, this is a T card, which is associated with the category of uh, tail. Yeah. Tail. Right. 
there we go, tail. And so you can you can see that. You take a look at it. It's got all the different categories here, but the T is kind of, you know, is larger and that stands out to tell you, okay, I'm looking at this card is going to be related to the tail I'm trying to tell with my data. Exactly. So if we flip them over and we'll find the audience category. So that will be the dark blue category. And so it should be after your first card. Yeah, there yep. you go. So every category has a title card. So this is the audience title card. And, uh, you know, so like every card has artwork on it that hopefully is kind of related to the concept in some mm -hmm. way, shape or form. Um, and what we're seeing here is if you flip the audience card on its back, it'll tell you a bit about the audience card. So how to use it, why you would use it, why it makes sense. And then it tells you the subcategories within audience. So there's so many cards in here. So part of the challenge with this is there's many concepts in data storytelling. And it's like, OK, well, do we just do a light version of it with like 54 cards? Or do we just go try and give a comprehensive toolkit? And we went yeah. with a comprehensive toolkit, but then we needed to have some more structure to it. So you'll also see within every category, so like an audience here, there's subcategories. So you can mm -hmm. see the subcategories there right, right here. here. Like, data attitudes, data literacy, right? So these various aspects of your audience generational factors, which is very interesting, actually. When I was looking and doing research into this, you know, we were trying to determine what are the most important characteristics of your audience, right? So if you want to understand your audience and you're going to deliver a data story to them, what do we need to know? You know, and obviously data attitudes. Like if someone's very skeptical about data, you're not just going to jump in and suddenly tell them exactly what they need to do with their data, right? You're not going to do that. You're going to have to massage things a little bit. You're going to have to go on a journey with them. So we need to know that. We need to know their data literacy, right? Like if you have someone who's like a data strategist versus someone who's a data novice, right? There's some things you don't have to tell a data strategist, right? It's like, you know what? Data has data quality problems, right? Well, they know all of that. So don't waste your time. You're just going to frustrate them. And some of the other things, but one of the things that was very interesting that came out was generational factors in how people interpret data and data stories matters based off their generation, right? So let's say a, a baby boomer looking at a presentation or let's say a dashboard versus a someone from, you know, um, Gen X, right? Or, or you know, millennial, mm -hmm. right? That they interpret it differently. They will react to it differently. And so we have to look at those. And then finally, you'll see there the psychological factors like cognitive bias, loss aversion, um, all of these sort of aspects that are very important to know about our audience. Yeah, I think um, uh, so. What, you know, when you when you say you're trying to decide, like, do we just go with a 54 card deck or do we go all out? I, I think you know, you talk about knowing your audience. This is one of those examples where, like, your audience is nerds, and nerds want all the cards. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, pay, they pay they pay extra for like the, the bonus <laughs> figures on the Kickstarter, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, this is very cool. So then, in this audience section, right? That so then A one um, is like this is a kind of yeah. uh, that's just that's kind of generally telling you about the audience, right? So gotcha. that's kind of a title card, and now you're on to your first subcategory, data attitudes. Okay. Yeah, and right. so let, and then... yeah, let's say you were then to go look at data skeptic. Right, so you say, oh, my audience, they're a data skeptic, right? Are they skeptics? It's going to tell you a little bit about the data skeptics, like what they are, what it means, but also it's going to tell you some tips in how to work with skeptics. Right, it's going to say stuff like, you know, make sure you cite your data sources. You have to build trust, right? Like, there's certain things you would do with a data skeptic, and on the backside of it, then Ryan, on on the um, where you see now. Every whenever it's in its same category, we reference eight cards in the same category. So in this case, audience. Where it's like, okay, what other cards do you maybe want to look at if you're dealing with ah. a data skeptic, right? And to say, like, a hmm. data skeptic might be non-technical, like, right? So let's look at the non-technical card, you know. Um, and then in context, right? So you make with a data skeptic, you want to make sure you give them the background details of what's going on. You also want to cite your data sources, card C48. And you can see for the rest of it, right? So, you know, types of charts we want to look at, how you want to deliver it. And this is where the graph came into it. So this is just not as simple as no. this is the hardest part. <laughs> like, like the yeah. artwork, simple. Uh, text, you know, writing the fronts of each card, simple, right? Trivial. It's just brute force. It just takes time, right? But the graph, 
that was really hard. I, uh, it's the hardest thing I've done in publishing is <laughs> making that network between all the cards and making them somewhat sensible. Um, right. So like, I can't say every time you work with a data skeptic, they're going to be a data novice. I can't say right. that. Right. But I can say, you know, quite often they will be right. So there's probabilities involved. Um, but you'll also find maybe there's cards that are not there that, you know, in your experience should be. Uh, but we try and cater as much as we can, given the limited space on the card, because they're pretty small cards as well. Man, I, I can already see what an enormous undertaking this was, just conceptually yeah. to, to pull this off. It's so impressive. And so, you know, so essentially what this is saying is, okay, see, we have these different audience cards. Okay, so we've got a data skeptic. We've got someone who's data cautious, data neutral, a data advocate, and a data enthusiast, right? Um, and so for each one of these cards, you flip it over, you say, okay, I'm dealing with someone who's a data skeptic. Then on the back, it's telling you the related cards in the set that may be useful to help you understand uh. how to best talk to this audience. Um, that's amazing. And, and so even, I mean, just, just identifying one card, you know, just going through and, and identifying your audience, which of these categories they fit into gives you a map of what other concepts may be useful. Exactly. And you had to do that for every card in the set. Exactly. So, oh, man. <laughs> so that's, that, that's like, this is exactly one of the use cases you've identified, Ryan. It, it is, let's say I know one thing about my data story. I know one thing. I know I'm going to do it in a dashboard. You just yeah. pick the dashboard card in the delivery category. And from there, the graph will direct you not not always correctly, but it'll direct you in a path that you might want to explore, right? So you can pick one card and your story starts there. You know, it's like if you remember those books, um, the, you know, choose your own adventure books, you know, it's yeah. like, hey, I'm on page, page five, I get to end of page five. Hey, you know, you can go down the left path down into the forest and uh, go to page eight, or you can go into the, you know, the dark looking valley and go to page 14. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it is it is like that, right? So there's a few ways you can use these. You can choose your own adventure, like you just described. Um, yep. Or you can just use go category by category. Or there's also, and, and I know we'll get to it, but there's also yep. the printouts um, that we have as well, like the templates to also make it another way for us to um, look at it. I think this is a good time to introduce the templates because I think, I think you know, th those of you who are watching, um, you know, you, you can probably see that there's, you know, this is actually quite a bit of, of uh, what I would call rich complexity to this deck, right? A lot of interrelations between the cards uh, and and ways that you can combine them. But just looking at it, it you know, you may, it, it would, I think it would be reasonable for someone the first time they crack it open to say, okay, this is very cool, but how do I practically apply this? And that is where the printouts fit in. So I'll just, I'll just use an example of a printout here. Okay, so tell us about this printout and it's like how this is. For, it's like a playmat for Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh or something. It really is. I'm thinking of uh, you know my my daughter and I, my daughter Freya and I play Pokemon, and like we we got the starter Pokemon card set that has a playmat that helps you understand where you know where do your status status effects cards go and and that sort of stuff. Um, this is kind of similar. So walk us through. Okay, we've got this cool card set. We know there's like quite a complicated knowledge graph co co connecting all the cards together. What does the the printout help us do? What what is this intended to, to accomplish? Yeah, you know, it's exactly like that Pokemon deck uh, Eric and yourself were, were talking about. And we yeah, we wanted to do something similar, but we didn't want to charge for it, right? Like the these are free PDFs that we continue to release. Like so, these are um, the version version three. So you can just download the PDF off our website and print them out. And we got various layouts. Now, this one is a set of five templates designed for each category. So basically, you would lay these out. Mm -hmm. And like you have there, you've got your audience uh, template. And it basically tells you what cards to put in each area here. And you know, for example, all the data attitude cards are A2 to A7. Right. Yes. So there are the cards, right? So you basically end up laying this out and then you would go through each stack of cards at a time to define your audience. Pick one 
from each stack basically is what you would end up doing. And that's that's how you would then define your audience. You know, so, so we would exactly so yes, exactly. The way here's you my hand. Them, <laughs> yeah, you would hold mm -hmm. it in your hands and then you would just put down the one that you think is most relevant to the story you're building. Yeah. So let's let's do it, right? Let's say, okay, I'm looking at this and I think uh, a scenario, I've got to uh, present a data finding. I'll go back to the beginning of my career. Um, I worked in uh, the utility industry. The utility industry, especially in 2010, was notoriously run based on the gut feeling of 55-year-old dudes, right? Like that's just was like, I remember the winter of 76 when it was really cold, and this is what happened with coal prices. And so I think it's going to happen again, right? Because it's the same kind of winter. It's cold and windy, which is different from a cold and not windy winter, right? And that, that is how they made decisions. So let's imagine I now have to present a finding to that room. I might say, okay, that is a room of data skeptics. Okay. Uh, these, these are people who believe in making decision based on past experience and gut feel and uh, inference and not on um, data, right? So I would right. take that card and I would say, okay, the data attitude of this group is they are data skeptics. Perfect. And I lay that there. And then I would move on to the next relevant question is, okay, we now we know their attitude. Now, how literate are they with, with data and data concepts? And so now I'm going to go through. And it tells me this is cards A8 through A13. So I will draw those cards <laughs> from the deck. <laughs> Ah, uh, you've activated my trap card, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then I say, okay, right? Where do they fit in from a data novice, which you define right here. So there's no ambiguity, right? You don't, as someone using these cards, you don't have to say to yourself, what, what category, I mean, you know, what does this category mean? It describes it to you on the card, this first section is a data novice is someone with limited experience or knowledge in data analysis and interpretation. When creating data stories for a data novice audience, focus on simplifying complex concepts, providing context, and using easy to understand visualizations to help them graf grasp the insights. So bar charts, line charts, not you know heat map, tree map combos, or Sankey charts, mm -hmm. um, that yeah. sort of thing. And then you have tips on how to communicate with them. Clear language, a straightforward language, clear visuals, relatable examples um, as the way to do that. So now in my example, again, these guys are going to be, you know, data novices uh, would be, you know, the, in the real world. But let's say, uh, let's say, you know, we, these, this room of power traders has recently gone through some training on, you know, data driven thinking. And we're going to say, okay, these guys are, data explorers in this case, right? And I would then lay that down here for the, the data literacy of my audience and then move on through the different steps. Each one of these categories, you know, then we'll look at, okay, data decision-making types. Is it strategic? Is it operational? Is it tactical? Um, and, and go through like that, right? And those, and those ones really matter, right? Like. You know, if it's a strategic decision maker and we're building a dashboard, we we don't want to have, you know, piles and piles of charts. Right. You know, we want we want KPIs, right? Yep. We want give us the cliff notes, tell us what's going on, versus like mm -hmm. a more operational or tactical dashboard or story we're telling, then we can go more into the weeds and 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 it's entirely appropriate to do so. Gotcha. Uh gotcha. Yeah. And so Okay, so, all right, and we would just continue on. Okay, this is, you know, we're trying to make a, an operational decision about, you know, where we're going to send coal uh, or something like that in this case, right? Um, right. Man, this is, I can see the amount of work and care that was put into yeah. this, <laughs> I, I think is truly impressive, Nick. Um, yeah, I'm, look, right. I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh, this is this is cool. <laughs> this is super cool. Um, I'm gonna we're just gonna flash here on the uh, screen again. If you're interested in picking up a set of these, um, no, that's Matt Housley. No, no, do not do not visit Matt Housley. 
Wrong you button. can if you want. I'm sure you'll find lots of stuff. Um, there we go. Oops. I, I stepped on your toes, Ryan. Yeah, we've got on. dueling uh, dueling, uh, dueling uh, controllers. Pro producers here uh -huh. on, on the Super Data Brothers show. Often We are often in conflict between who is clicking on what uh, on this yes. show. Um, here's a link. Uh, you can find the link in the uh, in the chat, but also here's a link to to check them out on uh, on Amazon um, mm -hmm. uh, to to get yourself a set. These are super cool. I am so impressed with this, um, the quality of it, and also the way that you've thought it through. Uh, and and I think the the PDF printout really the way that it it clearly guides you through the decision-making process here, like step-by-step. Step. So this is just the first printout. Uh, however, there's there's more than one. So we would go through, you know, and we would fill this out. And this, once this is filled out, what do I know at this point? Say I've, I've filled out now this whole sheet. What is it that I know? What, what conclusions can I draw at this point? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when when I was putting this together, I was thinking, okay, you know, is this similar to someone reading a book, right? Like, if they read a book on you know best practices for telling stories and and various things related to data viz, right? It'll take a while, and they'll have to consume a lot of information. It's very hard to replace that. Like, a book is a great tool. However, what if they only needed to read the bits they actually care about for the specific scenario they're in? The idea here is. Once they've done this, Ryan, they'd read everything. Like they would just read these cards if they haven't already. And then they would look at the backs of the cards to get a sense of what sort of landscape they need to look at for the other categories, right? Gotcha. So um, th the, the idea here is they would mostly just look at the next category. So what's recommended on the backs of these cards for the next category, which is context, which would then give them a good sense of, okay, which cards should I be looking at if they have no idea? They have no idea what they need to be looking at. And it's assumed they won't have any idea what they're looking at for mm -hmm. context. So these cards, the audience category is basically the foundation for them to move on to the next category by looking at the backs of the cards. Yeah, gotcha. And so, you know, we would say, okay, this is a middle level audience. If I turn the card over, you can see then that text category, it's suggesting to me cards C2, C7, C13, and C35 as potentially the best options for the for you know the mid-level uh audience type or you know or audience seniority rather exactly you know I, like part of the reason i put so much emphasis on on audience here is because this is where we usually get it wrong like yeah. if i if i look historically you know like i know i'm i'm kind of heavily biased towards dashboards right um but historically, if I look at dashboards that I've built that have gone awry, it's mostly happening here. I have mm -hmm. uh, in, incorrectly identified my audience, or I haven't sufficiently engaged my audience. Um, I haven't spent enough time on you know making sure they understand what the data sources are. Whatever the challenge was, I didn't do it properly, right? So the, these cards really set us up for success, like the audience. Um, and I think it's also the hardest thing for data people to do. This is one of the easier things for like the non-technical business person to do because they're probably the intended audience of the data story. And so they're already kind of comfortable with this. But Ryan, if you were to look at like the psychological factors um, section there, so mm -hmm. 35 to 44, I think this is where there's some real gold. So most of us, you know, I think most of us miss data literacy, you know, data attitudes, right? That's already useful to have. But where things really get problematic if we don't deal with it properly is the psychological factors, right? Like yeah. cognitive bias, bias like if, I, 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 it really doesn't matter the level of data literacy of someone if they have like this overwhelming bias, you know, towards certain outcomes, right? And um, so yeah. these are things that we need to look at. And I also identify before we start building any kind of data story, because you don't address it here. There's really not that much point in going ahead and working with your data if you haven't figured out how to deal with these aspects of your audience first. Ah, gotcha. So these are like the psychological factors at play with that audience. So cognitive biases might, you know, um, how do I how do I conceive of this? Like, like is this kind of, okay, so this is like maybe the decision-making. Um, well, take, take your example of, 
your coal executives, right? Yeah. They were looking at representative bias. So basically they were saying this happened in the 1970s. Therefore, what happened then represents what's going to happen now. Ah, okay. Right. Huh, so, okay. You, right. So you would put that card down and it's like, okay, well, we have to deal with this. We can't just identify it and ignore it. We mm -hmm. have to figure out how we're going to integrate and bring them on the journey um, so that they're not leveraging representative bias. And it yeah. gives you a tip on how to deal with it. Wow. This is um this is so useful, right? Sunk cost fallacy, where this one we're all, you know, we're all uh -huh. it's gotta be one of the most famous cognitive biases, I think. Oh yeah. Like, like everybody's familiar with at this point. Um Loss yeah, aversion, how... overconfidence. So you would say, okay, in this, in my, like in my um, in my example, um, you said it was it was representative bias. So uh, the tendency to judge the probability of an event based on on its similarity to a prototype. In this case, the prototypical winter of 1978. And so mm -hmm. now I know, like I I have taken the time to think through essentially. You know what? Um, oh, and I see you've got spaces for more than one here. Yeah. Uh, mm. see, I was going to ask that. Right? What one. if I can't choose? Yeah. Yeah. And and this is partly just a limitation of the letter size. Yeah. Uh, of the printout, right? But uh, if you want to add more, you just stock them on top of each other. But we also have larger format printouts as well. If you have a, a bigger printer at hand. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say, okay, you know, these like a representative bias in this case because they're working from uh, the assumption that uh, whatever the you know the current situation will be similar to the prototype, you know, and then uh, you know maybe there's a an overconfidence because these guys have been in the utility industry for forty years and they know and and now this is going to tell me again at this point I flip these over. Yeah, like what, what's on the me, back of overconfidence, right? Yeah, like it gives me tips. Okay, how do I deal with someone with with an audience that's operating with re, from a position of a representative bias, from a position of overconfidence? Exactly. Man. And, and, and and you know, once you finish this category, as you go on to the next categories, you have to make sure you're addressing all of these. That right. you look back at your audience template and you go, okay, well, how did we solve for this? Right, so it's it's a it's a reminder as well to make sure that we have to deal with these things in order to be successful. Like, like it, this is also in part like a data literacy deck. You know, it's like I think most people that work with data are just not familiar with with these ideas. Now, if you're a change management professional, this is just like totally normal. Yeah, of course you have to deal with these psychological factors. Like it's a given. If you want people to adopt something new. You have to deal with the people factors, but in data, um, and it certainly was the case for me when I first started hearing about change management. I was like, "Wow, this whole very rich and detailed space of you know things I need to learn about about people." Mm -hmm. um, just you know, it's like it's a huge field of study, and it's got massive implications for data professionals, right? And 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 this kind of gives you a you know a very light, easy, bite-sized, digestible version of that it's like the cliff notes of how to deal with people yeah yeah that's um huh. i i mean uh, just the value i i can see of of um even just going through the deck like just reading through the cards uh to 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 become aware of ideas you know the fact that the psychological factors of your audience matters right and and you've you know you've even got um what is it? It's card A35 that even describes this, right? Like, why why does this matter? And then, and so this is the way the cards are sequenced is like the first card of a section is, okay, what is this section and why does it matter? And then you have the details for that section. So, you know, A36 is the first kind of detailed card, but card A35 is telling you, okay, you need to consider the psychological factors. Here's what they are. Here's why you need to consider this, and here's tips for or for keeping it in mind. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and, and this and this stuff's just hard, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. Dealing with humans, and and most of us won't. Most <laughs> of us won't, but it's at our own peril. Peril. Yeah. Right. If if yeah. you want to be like I I I used to work in user experience, 
uh, you know, and obviously working data, right? Um, and I've been learning change management and having to do enterprise level deployments of dashboards and data projects, like at the highest scales, um, you ignore at your peril. Like really, like if you want to fail, ignore this stuff, right? Yeah. Like it, yeah. there's, there's no if or buts about it. You have to manage the people, their expectations and, and just basically their relationship and attitudes towards data. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I you know, I've, I think all three of us, I'm sure, have experienced that, especially early on in your career. You know, you, it's so easy to get wrapped up in solving technical problems, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go into data because that's fun for them, uh, and and we've all experienced where you solve a tech problem technically, your solution is excellent, and then when it makes contact with the actual consumers of your data, it's a complete and total flop. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I have a very clear memory that when I learned this lesson was I was, was back in the OLAP cube days and I designed a new OLAP cube for our project managers who had been reporting all projects on their own personal spreadsheets. So there were like 40 PMs at this organization and they all had their own flavor of spreadsheet. And that was just deemed to be okay. We decided we had to standardize it. And what I built just utterly and completely missed the mark to the point where, although it was mm -hmm. technically very correct, it wasn't what they needed. It wasn't what they wanted. And I, I jumped forward a few months and of the 40 project managers, like three were using it. And the other 37 had been given permission to go back to their personal bespoke Excel spreadsheet. And it was because this whole sheet, I didn't think of at all. None yeah. of this occurred to me. Yeah, and and, and it wouldn't. I, we're not trained to think about this stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. just the pure human side of it. Yeah. So then would this um what so like here's the this is the like step one, understanding your audience, right? So that's yeah. the A. Yeah. And then what the next for then like so you'd go through this exercise and like you'd bring out the C. Right. Step two, <laughs> the C. Right. So if <laughs> we then, just take like let's take our representative bias that's kind of yeah. forming the basis of our story. Okay. Imagine I had filled all this out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would, I would love to fill all this out. Actually. I just think we'd be live streaming for, you know, too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get, yeah. We've, 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 got about, uh, we've got about an hour total. Yeah. You know? So then, you know, so uh, representative bias, it's kind of, I, I, I think at the heart of the particular audience that I'm talking about here, this is how they do business. This is their psychological state of mind. Um, Okay, so now I've moved on to, I, I've kind of gone through step one, which is understanding my audience. Mm -hmm. I now move on to step two, which is establishing the context of the story I'm trying to tell. And that's where this section of the card comes into play. Like this is suggesting to me that when it comes to establishing context for a group that is you know, using the, the cognitive or psychological framework of representative bias, that these are the cards that are going to be most, most useful for working with this audience. So I'm going to, we'll just set this here. It's kind of off yeah. camera a little bit, but I'm, I'm, you know, here you can see, right. For uh, reference, you're, you're going to tap your data, your data card to, uh, activate <laughs> insights. Yeah, exactly. Right now is that's how you can tell oh, I've used it is it's turned you've tapped. It's tapped. Yeah, it's been tapped. So, so for this round, I can't use it again. Yeah. At the end of the round, I'll turn it like this. Um, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so then here's the context cards. And this is suggesting, you know, context C2. So setting the context of my options mm -hmm. for setting the context. Um, right. That's uh, like, you know, cards C2. Um, what? Uh, C, what is this? C through C6. So like these are the things I could... I could use as a context setting technique for these guys, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And so, some of this is like, you know, um, just basically understanding what context is. Like, so yep. some of these cards are just like foundational. Um, if I'm not wrong, I think one of the cards for representative bias might be existing trends. Like, it, I think C7 maybe. Um, right there. Yes, yeah. Right. So if you're dealing with someone with representative bias, well, the first thing you might want to do is, well, historically, is that true? Right. Um, like, is what you're saying actually true? Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and not challenging them on it, just showing historical trends. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, 
Um, so instead of just jumping straight into our regular data story that we want to tell them, where they're going to have a lot of resistance to, we're just kind of laying the, the, the foundation of the context here and saying, you know, in the past, we've had these ups and downs. And, and look, we have this pattern. Every five years, it seems to happen. It seems to be unrelated to, you know, whatever they think the representative bias yeah. is, right? Right. Um, so, yeah. and it's it's non-confrontational, right? It's just saying this is this is how it is, right? Now, maybe you wouldn't show that for people that don't have representative bias. And that's why it's recommended, right, um, on that card. Yeah. And so like here, this is, this would say, okay, you know, maybe I might come here and, and is the first thing I would do maybe is like seed this with these recommendations. Yeah. Lay them out. Yeah. Ge generally that's what I would advise. Um, but also there's the more free form approach as well that you took with the audience category, mm -hmm. which was, okay, maybe I'm just going to go through, you know, stack by stack and see what also makes sense. Right. So, and you could take a balanced approach to it as well when I'm doing mm -hmm. it just because I'm familiar with it and I've done it a few times, I just do it stack by stack. If you're using it the first time, I do recommend you follow the recommendations on the backs of the cards. Yeah, yeah. Because kind of like, a, these are almost the, like the, you know, well, this is basically the back of the card is the knowledge graph. And, and this is basically the, the guide rails for you um, so that you're not looking at each category and saying, Boy, which one of these do I pick? And and this is helping you understand how you know how they're all related to one another. So mm -hmm. um, exactly, and like so, the, like the first time you use this, it's, there's a learning curve. You know, it's going to take a while, but the <clears throat> um, from then on, it gets much faster. You know what's in yeah. the deck, and then yeah. it becomes really good to work with people, to work with your stakeholders. Or let's say you're a, you're the business stakeholder, and you're going to work with the data people on this. You're going to sit down and spend half an hour with them, and go through it, right, yep, and just yeah. say. Is this true? And how are we going to deal with this? Oh, look, we got a data skeptic and, and agree on what your approach is going to be, right? So it can be a way to sort of formulate your approach. Like this would be one of the first things you would do when you're going to yeah. make a presentation with data or build a dashboard or report or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to see how useful this would be because like I'm imagining if I like went through this exercise and then I either like did like a proposal or just like had a brief presentation about it during like a screen share or something like it'd be like man i'd really know i really sound like i knew what i was talking about yeah <laughs> you know it's like it's like yeah. golly golly eric you really thought about this you know of course. <laughs> so it's like but um one thing uh so we're getting towards the end of the hour so i just want to go over a few comments and then if anyone has any uh comments or questions or you, you can fruitfully get them get them in they can be basic they can be advanced and yep. we'll try to get to them so yep. we've got uh Diego from Columbia. Hi, Diego. Um, we've got Charles from Atlanta saying Nick always delivers, I'll right? Charles, kind. <laughs> yep. And then uh, he has, I presume this will also benefit the data analysis report. Correct. I don't know if he's referring to something specific you'd know about. Yeah, because one of the one of the delivery methods here is a, a delivering a report. Uh, yep. So yeah. you know, you're delivering a presentation, you know, slides in person in a report on a dashboard. And so, yes, absolutely, Charles, you could use it for a report. And, yep. and I think I think that's actually, Charles brings up a very crucial point in my mind, which is without knowing anything about this, you might think, oh, it's it, what it's going to be is it's going to just be a deck of like visualization types and when to use them and like dashboard layouts which is you do is a pro, you know is something you've created. I mean, you know, we're not going to have time to unbox it again today. But like you know, a little plug here, right? You do have that product. But um, what I think is so crucial about this is is where it starts in the process. It starts way before thinking about a report or thinking mm -hmm. about you know a vi visualization types and that sort of thing. I mean, that doesn't come in. Like here's you know category two or step yeah. two is is. Um, uh, uh, the context. And then we've got, you know, tell the tale, envision the story and then deliver the story. And so it's not until we get further into this process that we start asking ourselves, what chart type should I use? Should yeah. it be a dashboard? Should it be a presentation? Um, all this, this stuff is so foundational. And the fact that it starts with that stuff that data people so often neglect is in my mind, one of the biggest values of what you've created here is it's just like you need to start understanding your audience, understanding the context in which the data is being communicated. You don't start by saying, 
oh, I think this should be a Sankey chart because, you know, because mm -hmm. I've built a hundred Sankey charts in the past. And they're, and, and they're cool. And, and I'm they're good cool, at it. Right. <laughs> you know, um, let, let me ask you, uh, Nick, would you, how would you recommend people use these? Is this something you do by yourself or you do with your team or, or might you actually sit down with a stakeholder and, and bust these out? Yeah. yeah, you know, the the initial intent was you do it by yourself, um, but the people buying it and the feedback we're getting is definitely more on the uh, two areas. Firstly, is as a group, we're doing it together. <clears throat> tech and the non-tech are the, the business person working together. The other one was, which was a surprise to me, because I, I really didn't mar market it this way, was training for data literacy. Like, by far, we're getting um, most interest um, and people basically bulk buying them uh, for their companies, right? And, yeah. and, and then doing training on it, right? So like, how do you tell a day's story? Um, so I, I would say it's probably in that hierarchy. If mostly it's been used for training and enablement, which is was not on my radar. Um, and then the second one was in, in groups, like in pairs are larger as they're kind of formulating their approach, like it might be a team that has to do a presentation, they're, they're mm -hmm. doing it together. And then finally, which was my original intended use case, which is by yourself um, to do it. So yeah, kind of in that order. It's, it's so funny how when you, with a creative endeavor like this, and this really is, right? That, that, that's like, there, there was a lot of creativity that went into creating this. Um, it's so funny how the way it's received and used like once you release it into the world, it, it goes in directions you could have never anticipated. Yeah, it, it's and and I'm, and I'm not complaining. Right, <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> having the uh, we've we've never delivered so many trainings. I will say, um, in the years we've been doing training, corporate training, um, with since since the uh, release of the data storytelling cards. They Do people bring you in specifically to tr like teach us how to use these cards? Is th yes. is that Yes, wow. and it's in a way to enable their team to tell stories. And um, but the biggest term I'm hearing is data literacy through these cards, right? It's to enable their team, their business teams, to work with their data teams. And so going through this kind of training helps them become more data literate. This is um, uh, we're at the uh, the top of the hour here, so we gotta. Or it's, I, I'm so used to saying the top of the hour. The top of the half hour. The top of the half okay. hour. Yeah. Um, so we're going to wrap things up here. I want to thank you for coming on the show and creating this incredible product. I love this. Um, I really do. I, I just think this is, and I'm going to try to switch. We'll see if I'm actually able to switch over so so people can see me again. Um, there, hi, everybody. Um, is it going to work? Is it going to work or am I frozen? Nope, I'm frozen. Ah, so irritating. <laughs> okay. Um, We'll do this bizarro view again. Hi, there everybody. we go. Um, I love this this product. What you've created here, I think the amount of thought that's gone into it yeah. and the value I see in this set of cards as a data practitioner is just immense. Uh, and so, you know, I want to, I, 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 it's just like, I love this. I, I don't have enough good stuff to say about it. This is so well organized it brings up so many good points that data people need to be thinking about that they are often not thinking about um and i just want to commend you and uh and your and your your team for for building this i did notice the um you know creative input by aiden and athena kelly so is, are, are those your kids they are yeah the the, the <laughs> eight and six at the time <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful um that's wonderful uh, so where can people uh, you know, obviously we have an Amazon link here, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, where can people find these and where can they follow you in general? Yeah. So they'll exclusively find it like on Amazon via the link you have. Um, mm -hmm. and we don't sell it off our website and, but they will get their downloadable PDFs off our website. So the website's delivering data analytics.com and yeah. And, and I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Nicholas Kelly on LinkedIn You'll find me there too. Awesome. Uh, great. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap things there. Um, let's just go ahead and. All right, Eric. Um, mm -hmm. Are these cool or what? 
Yeah, they're super cool. I, I, I didn't really like, do, you know, for an unboxing, I made sure well, actually not to look very yeah, much you into it. Go in it. blind, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, okay, so there'll be some cards or something. Tell me about about dashboards. I'm like, oh no, this is like, I, I, I just like the first two steps we we did. I thought it would be useful because it's like, oh, this will give me the language, you know, to talk about this with people. Yeah, essentially, right? So it's like, if I use this line, it's like, oh, here's this, this, use this language, like it'll give me the first steps to be like, okay, here's. Here's the plan. Not, here's our. We're not going to. This isn't about creating the dashboard. This is like here's our plan for like delivering. Maybe it's a dashboard. Maybe it's not. Whatever it is, we're going to deliver to to solve whatever group's problem. Right. And I feel like it'll give you the language to actually do that. Right? Yeah. So it should and, be. And like it helps yeah. you understand all the things that you that you're not thinking about before mm -hmm. beforehand that you need to be thinking about as a data person. Yeah. I wag and like my like, like yeah. Like the graph, <laughs> like the graph is like, I imagine that took a very That's long amazing. time. Yeah, dude, yeah. next time you're over here, uh, you got to check these out in person too. I mean, there's yeah. just like, this is really high quality stuff. Yep. Um, all right, folks, check yep. it out at the so, Amazon link. Uh, check yep. Nick out on LinkedIn. And um, right, right. Yep. You right, can there, see right, right there, right there. And uh, Amazon we're link. Gonna, right. We're going to go ahead and, and wrap it there. Sorry for the yep. uh, slight, slight technical issues we had today. You know, there's a lot of, uh, uh, everything was working last night before I went to bed, uh, but this is how it goes sometimes. You just got to roll yep. with it. So, yep. um, yeah, uh, until next week, I am, uh, I'm Ryan. I'm Eric. And before, before I leave, just another plug. We're the Super Data Brothers. We're live every, every Thursday, usually at 12 Eastern time um, yep. on YouTube and on LinkedIn. Most people watch on LinkedIn. Uh, normally one or two people watch on YouTube. So maybe we'll stop <laughs> broadcasting to YouTube at some point. Just focus on LinkedIn because that's where people are watching. Nah. Um, but yeah, we're the Super Data Brothers. We cover mostly business intelligence. So stuff like this, you know, uh, talking with industry experts. We've talked to a lot of people. So if you're interested, if you, if you liked what we were talking about today and you want to hear more about it, we do product reviews. You know, I did a deep dive on QuickSight. And then I later heard that someone used that video to make a decision about whether to use QuickSight. They decided no. So, <laughs> which is good because I don't work for QuickSight. So I'm like, oh, I'm glad it helped you because I, I have no skin in the game. So that's why we're able to give a uh, neutral review. So yep. if you if you liked what if you like what you saw today, please tune in again. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, follow us on LinkedIn, Eric Dolly and Ryan Dolly. And then Ryan, do we have any interesting shows coming up next week or in the next few weeks? Uh, yeah, we do, but I'm not ready to announce anything yet. So, um, okay. we will, uh, we're still sorting out a couple guest schedules, but we have some, some very cool stuff coming up that, uh, y'all are going to enjoy. So stay yeah. tuned, uh, every week, 12 o'clock on Thursday, we mm -hmm. have the Super Data Brothers folks. I am Ryan. I am Eric. And, uh, yeah, we will see you next week. Take care. All everyone. right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.